Hello and welcome back to another full step by step PC build guide. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the latest case from Corsair. This is the Frame 4500X. You'll find links to all the parts I've used in the description. So, as usual, let's make a start by taking a really detailed look at this case. So right out of the box, you can see one of this case's standout features, and that is the single piece of curved tempered glass panel going around the front and side of the case. To remove the tempered glass panel, the first thing you want to do is get your fingers in at the top and then pull it forwards. It's on rails, so it is going to stop. Next thing to do is to lift the panel upwards and outwards to free it up from the case. So I'm just going to get hold of it, lift up and out. And our other side panel comes in two parts. To remove the solid part, there's a little lever at the back we just need to pull outwards. And then we're able to lift the panel up and away. To remove this panel, we just need to pull it towards us from the bottom. That's going to free it up at the bottom, and then we can simply lift it up to remove it. Taking a look at the back of this panel, we've got an integrated sheet of mesh to act as a dust filter. Taking a look at our case's front I.O., we've got a power button, a combined headphone and microphone jack. We've got two USB Type-A ports and a single Type-C port. To remove our case's top panel, there's two captive thumb screws at the back, which we need to loosen. And then we can simply pull the panel backwards and lift it up to remove it. Taking a closer look at the panel we've just removed, you'll notice we've got no additional dust filters. And again, as most people are going to have the top of the case set to exhaust, this isn't normally a problem. But if we take a look at the panel, you'll notice we've got absolutely massive cutouts in it. So while this might be great for airflow, I would have some worries about dust getting in whenever the PC is powered off. So if you're planning on going for a custom loop, you'll be pleased to see we've got a cutout for a fill port on the top of the case. And there's another cutout for a drain port on the bottom. And in terms of fan and radiator support at the top, it's up to 3120 or 240 millimeter fans, or up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. So this case uses Corsair's Infini Rail system, and out of the box, it's set up for 140 millimeter fans or a 280 millimeter radiator. Now I'm going to be using a 360 millimeter radiator at the top, so I'm going to have to move these rails further towards the front of the case to the 120 millimeter slot. So all we need to do is loosen up the two screws. And then we can bring the rail towards the front of the case um, where the yellow mark is going to line up with a 120 millimeter slot. And then all we need to do is tighten up the screws. Fan and radiator support on the side of the case is exactly the same as the top, up to 3120 or 240 millimeter fans, or up to a 360 or 280 millimeter radiator. Um, and these are reverse blade fans, so they're going to be bringing plenty of cool air into the case. So there's two versions of the case. Both come with three reverse blade fans on the side set to intake. They both have ARGB on it. The cheaper one just has standard ARGB fans, and this is the more expensive version. And these fans connect up to Corsair's IQ Link Hub, which is included with the case. So our side mounted fans are mounted on a removable bracket. There's one screw at the top holding it in place. And then with the screw removed, you can simply tilt the bracket backwards and lift it up to remove it from the case. You're probably not going to need to do this because I imagine most people are just going to leave the case as it comes out of the box. Um, this bracket is able to be installed in two different positions. There's two sensor notches at the bottom. So if I simply insert it into the ones further towards the back of the case, and you'll notice at the top here we've got two different screws. Um, I can line it up here and it's going to line up then with the different screw hole at the top further towards the back of the case. At the rear of the case it's possible to mount 120 or 140 millimeter fans or radiators. And it is also possible to mount two 120 millimeter fans on our power supply surround. You can see we've got holes in the bottom for our fans. So you're simply going to set your fans into place. And in the case accessory box we get these long radiator screws. They're going to go down through the fans and you're going to simply screw them into the bottom of the case. Our final fan mounting slot is at the bottom. You can see our 120 millimeter screw holes here. Again, the mounting process is exactly the same as the power supply stride. Set your fan into place and screw down using the long radiator screws. And we've got a full length dust filter on the side of the case and it can simply be pulled out from the side for cleaning. In terms of motherboard support, the case supports motherboards up to E8X in size. And you see we've got additional cutouts for both back connector ATX and also back connector micro ATX motherboards. If you want to go with a CPU air cutter, the maximum height supported is up to 185 millimeters. If you want, it is possible to remove the motherboard tray from the case. First thing to do is remove our GPU support bracket. So it's held on with two screws at the back. And then when the screw is removed, it can simply be lifted out of the case. We've then got to remove four screws holding the motherboard tray in place. And with the four screws removed, you can simply tilt the motherboard tray into the case. 
And if it wasn't for all these cables attached to the back, we'd be able to simply remove it. So nice to have as an option, but I do think it'll be easier just to leave this installed in the case and install our motherboard directly to it. You can see at the rear of the case, we've got seven horizontal expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is up to 460 millimeters. So of course our keen that your graphics card is well supported and they include this GPU support bracket. To adjust it, you simply loosen the thumb screw at the front. And that's gonna allow you to slide the bracket up and down, get it into the exact position that you want. And once you've got it in position, just tighten that thumb screw to hold it in place. So we do have a nice little rubber pad on the GPU support bracket to protect your graphics card. And sometimes you just can't get the GPU support bracket lined up with your graphics card and keeping out of the fans. Um, of course, I've thought of this, and there's an additional rubber pad here. So you are able to stick this anywhere on the rubber pad. The idea behind it is you're gonna find a point where it supports the plastic bit of your graphics card and it moves the bracket down away from your fans, meaning that your graphics card is supported, but the bracket isn't gonna get caught in the fans. So you want to mount your graphics card vertically. This bracket is rotatable. There's two thumb screws you're gonna to need to loosen. We can then slide the bracket out, lift it out from the back, and we've got three notches here. We can line the bracket up with and then tilt it up into place and re-secure the two thumb screws. So that's what it looks like with the expansion slot brackets in the vertical position. And in terms of installing your riser card, there's two different positions it can be installed in. These are the back positions and these are the front positions. So just select the position that you want and take the two larger standoffs from the case accessory box and screw them into place. And then all you need to do is secure your riser cable to the standoffs. It is important to mention the riser cable isn't included with the case, so if you do want to mount your graphics card vertically, this is the only thing you're gonna to have to pick up as an additional extra. Take a look in at the other side of the case, and cable room space looks to be good at up to 34 millimeters, and we've got obviously a load of Velcro cable straps, so cable management should be really straightforward. It's good to see that all our case cables are color matched to the color of the case and that we've got a single front panel connector. Although if for whatever reason you need a separate front panel connectors, there is a little adapter included in the case accessory box. So as I've mentioned, I've got the version of the case that comes with the Corsair IQ Link Hub and you can see that our case fans are already connected up to it. We do have another port on the other side of the case and we're gonna be able to plug our AIO into here. And I will cover setting this up later on, but all we're gonna to need to plug in is our USB 2.0 header into our motherboard. And we're just gonna to need to power the hub with a six pin PCIe cable. So you'll see that out of the box, our hub is attached to our drive mounting bracket. Um, this drive mounting bracket's held on with a captive thumb screw at the top. And once it's been removed, you can simply lift it up from the bottom to take it out of the case. So on this bracket, you are able to mount up to two two and a half inch drives or a single three and a half inch drive. Just a simple matter of setting your drives into place. You can see the two and a half inch drive screws here. Here we've got the three and a half inch drive screws. And then you're gonna simply screw it in from the other side with the screws included in the case accessory box. So you can see with our hub installed, it is still possible to mount a two and a half inch drive beside it. But if you want to mount a second two and a half inch drive or to mount a three and a half inch drive in this bracket, you are gonna to need to move this hub somewhere else in the case. So the case supports full-sized ATX power supplies. I can't see the maximum supported length in the reviewer's guide, but the distance to the front of the power supply stride is 260 millimeters, and obviously you're gonna to have to factor in any power supply cables to this. And it's great that we're not gonna to have to use power supply screws. We've got these two captive thumb screws sitting at the back. So once we've installed our power supply, all we're gonna do is tighten these up to hold it in place. And you can see we get a really nice case accessory box where we're gonna be able to keep all our spare screws in individually separated. And we've got loads of cable ties for cable management. We're now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're gonna be installing our CPU, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we put the motherboard into the case. To open our socket cover, we need to push this lever down and out, bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard and then we're gonna be able to open the socket cover up. Holding our CPU by the edges and making sure we've got the text the correct way up, we're gonna lower it carefully down into the socket. And once we're happy it's sitting correctly, we can go ahead and close the socket cover. Then as we close this lever, the white bit of plastic will pop off and we'll put it into our motherboard box for safekeeping. So our CPU killer isn't gonna use the stock clips, it's just gonna screw straight into our back plate so we can remove the stock clips that are each held on with two screws. To remove our heatsink, there's a little lever here we need to push in and then we're gonna be able to lift the heatsink up and remove it. And we need to remove the plastic protection from the heatsink. We can then insert our M.2 SSD into the slot and we'll go ahead and flatten it down and this little clip is gonna hold it in place. 
I'm not planning on reinstalling our heatsink just yet because you see it blocks our middle screw hole so we'll put it in place once we've installed the motherboard in the case. So likewise, but even though I'm not planning on installing any further M.2 SSDs, our bottom screw holes are hidden by this bottom heatsink. So I'm going to need to remove it. We'll simply push the lever in at the back. We can lift the heatsink up and remove it. So you'll see behind it we have three further M.2 SSD slots and this bottom slot is an additional Gen 5 slot, just like the one at the top. The two in the middle are Gen 4 slots. So we're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. So we'll go ahead and open the clips on these slots. Then all we need to do is line the RAM up with a slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the top and it's going to clip into place. And then it's just the same thing with our second stick. Next, we can set our motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back. So you'll notice our middle standoff is elongated and once it passes through the hole in the middle of the motherboard, it's going to help hold the motherboard in place and we're not actually going to put a screw in yet. So we'll secure our motherboard into place with the eight of the motherboard screws from the case accessory box. So because we're not actually putting a screw into this middle hole, I could actually have installed our heatsink on the table and we can also reinstall our large bottom heatsink. I'm just going to temporarily uninstall our GPU support bracket. In the case accessory box, we get this magnetically attached cable cover, and it's going to cover the gaps over towards the right hand side of our motherboard. So you can see we've got our screw holes here. So all we're going to do is slide the bracket into place, line it up with the screw holes, and then we can reinsert our GPU support bracket. And I think you'll agree that looks a lot cleaner. So this brings us on to plug in our front panel connectors and our HD audio cable is going to go to this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard and we're going to plug it in with the audio text facing up the way. Working along we've got two USB 2.0 headers so we're going to take the USB 2.0 cable coming from our hub and we're going to plug it in with the USB text facing up the way. So this brings us on to our front panel connectors and they're going to go into the pins on the right hand side of this header here and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing down the way. Then we come onto your USB 3.0 cable and it's going to go into this header here. You'll notice there's a cutout on this side and we've got a little notch on the cable here. So we just have to line it up the correct way. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. And then we've got our front panel type C header here. So we'll go ahead and line our cable up with the header and push into place. We're now ready to install our power supply and it is fully modular coming without any of the cables plugged in. I've gone ahead and plugged the cables in that we're going to need. So I've plugged in our 24 pin motherboard cable, two 8 pin EPS cables. We're going to need an 8 and a 4 pin. Um, I've also plugged in a PCIe cable. We're going to need this to power our IQ Link Hub. And I've also plugged in a 12 volt 2x6 cable to power our graphics card. So we're going to want to install our power supply with its intake fan facing down the way. So we'll go ahead and install our power supply into the case and slide it all the way to the back. And at the back of the case, we can tighten up the two thumb screws to hold our power supply in place. Our EPS cables are going to go on these headers at the top right of the motherboard. So we can take our 8-pin connector, line it up and push it into place. And we can take our second 8-pin connector and simply split it into two. And then we can plug one half into the 4-pin connector. Our 24 pin connector is going to go into this header here. So just a matter of lining it up with a header and pushing it into place. The last thing to power is our link hub. So we'll take the PCIe cable coming from our power supply and plug it into the hub. We're now ready to install our IIO and it's great to see that our fans are pre-installed in the radiator. So one last thing to do. So we get this really long cable and I'm going to have the tubes coming out towards the rear of the case. So I'm going to plug our cable here and route all the way around to the back to the fans at the front, which are already connected up to our hub. So that's going to mean the fans and the radiator are going to be connected through the fans on the side to the hub. So we'll just go ahead and plug the cable into place. Now, if you are getting this cooler from new, there will be thermal paste pre-applied to it. I've already used this for a build, so that's why there's none here. So the only additional thing we're going to have to do before putting this into the case is change the bracket out of the box that's set up for an Intel motherboard. So we can simply pull the Intel bracket off. And in the box, we get our AMD bracket. So simply slide it into place. And we're now ready to install this in the case. So I'm just going to pass the long connecting cable through to the back and then set the I.O. into place at the top of the case. And we'll secure things into place using the included short radiator screws. 
So then I'm just going to route the CAN cable all the way through to the other side and we'll get it plugged into the fans at the top. So I'm just going to add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. As I've mentioned, if you're using the cooler from new, it'll come with thermal paste pre-applied, so you can simply skip this step. And then we just need to line the pump up with the bracket on the motherboard. And once we're happy, everything's lined up. It's just tightening up each corner in turn. So the last thing for us to do is to connect our pump up to the hub. And at the top of the pump, we have a similar connector to what we have on our fans. So we've got another long cable with our AIO. So I'm just going to pass the longer connection through to the back, and then I'll plug the smaller connection into the pump. And then all we need to do is plug the other end of the cable coming from our pump into the other side of our hub. We're now ready to install our graphics card. We're going to need to remove the second and third expansion slot cover from the top. Next, we need to open the clip in our top PCIe slot by pressing the button on the motherboard. And then we'll go ahead and line our graphics card up with the slot. And once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure. And our GPU is going to clip into place. And we'll secure it into place with the two thumb screws we've just removed. Next, I'm just going to want to slide the GPU support bracket up to where it is supporting our graphics card. And I'm just going to give it a quick test of the fans. And actually, it does look like our GPU support bracket is hitting on the fans. So we're going to have to stick this little additional pad into place and it looks like right at the back is where we're going to want to stick it. So this time it does look like the GP support bracket is supporting the graphics card well and there's no issues with our fan. So we'll slide it up to where the GPU is straight and just tighten up that thumb screw. And then just a final check and our fan is able to spin freely. So then we can bring our 12 volt 2x6 cable through the cutout at the bottom and we'll get it plugged into our graphics card. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get the panels back on again. So that's our build complete, and as you can see, I've got everything set up. If you don't know how to install Windows, the drivers, the RGB software, enter the BIOS, update the BIOS, and adjust all your BIOS settings, I've made another video that covers all of that, and you'll find a link to that video in the description. So what I'm planning on doing now is some thermal testing, and then I'm going to be doing a case review. So if you want to hear what I think about this case, you're going to want to check that video out, and you'll find a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well.